Hello, everybody, and welcome to Chapter Select, a seasonal podcast where we bounce back and forth between a series, exploring its evolution, design, and legacy. For Season 5, we are covering the Resident Evil franchise. My name is Max Roberts, and I am joined, as always, by Logan Moore. Hi, Logan. It's time to bid adieu to Raccoon City. Deuces, Raccoon City. Peace out. It was nice knowing you. We're done with our little RC arc. We are. That's kind of why I wanted to structure the season in this manner that we got Those... through all the Raccoon City saga games up front outside of other various Resident Evil spinoffs. But yeah, all the mainline ones are done after this game. Now we head off to Antarctica. We head off to Antarctica and uh, Spain and Africa and We become China. world travelers. Yeah, you go from one little town... With that, that a pharmaceutical company runs to traveling the globe. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, oh, well, thankfully, we go out on a high note. Quite literally, we're up in the sky in a helicopter when everything's blown up. It's true. So, but I, I love this game and you don't. And so I think that's going to, well, you don't love it as much as I do. I don't. And yeah. It, I don't, <clears throat> I don't hate the game by any but, means. But I think that will make for an interesting discussion and episode here as we talk about Resident Evil 3. Or, as it used to be called, Resident Evil 3, colon nemesis. Yes. Yeah, let's get into the history of this one, and then we'll... Because, yeah, I, I wanted to toss it to you first uh, when it comes to our takes on the game. But, uh, yeah, let's run down all the basic information. So, again, developed and published by Capcom. Uh, Resident Evil 3 originally released on PS1. It, re- it also came to PC and Dreamcast and GameCube. The remake, which, again, we should specify, we have played here we did not play the original game we've talked about this on the uh earlier in the season before um but we played the remake that came in uh to ps4 xbox one pc switch most recently and then it got an upgrade for ps5 and xbox series x uh the original game released on november 11th 1999 the remake launched in the middle of covid there the early part of covid on april 3rd 2020 did you play this game maybe maybe we could talk about this a little bit more later did you play this game when it first came out no i played it first actually last year so in 22 but i was writing up the document today and saw that it came out april 3rd 2020 and i was like wait this was a covid game it doesn't feel it feels so much older it feels like way before covid but it actually was right at the start of covid and i couldn't i couldn't believe it Yeah, do you know like the live action sort of opening to this game where it's talking about like, and their plague is spreading around the city and umbrella and it's like showing everything that's like breaking down within the city. That was a very dystopian thing to see. I mean, obviously when COVID was happening, the world was not like what is shown in the game there, but it was still like very strange to see that opening. Yeah, it was like too close to home. Yeah, it was like two weeks into the pandemic and this game came out and I played this game as soon as it launched. And I was like, this is a little strange right now to be <laughs> playing this one. Uh, anyway, uh, the game director of the original game was Kazuhiro A- Aoma. Aoama, I'm sorry for butchering the names once again. Uh, the remix director was Kiyohiki Sakata. The producer of the original was Shinji Mikami. And then the producers on the remake were Masachika Kawada and Peter Fabiano. The music in the original game was... Masami Ueda and Sayori Maeda. And the remake had music from, once again, Masami Ueda, Koda, Koda Suzuki, uh, Taka, Takayasu Sodioki, and Asuza Kado. The Metacritic score for the original game was a 91 out of 100. And uh, we have multiple ones here. What is this second one? Is this for it's, the GameCube version? No. So I'm looking at the... 79 out of 100 was the PS4 version, but the Xbox One version has an 84. So I didn't... It, normally, they're really close. They're one point apart or something like that. They're generally the same. But this one was a five-point difference, and I thought that was at least significant enough to to mention here. Yeah. Um, maybe there were issues on the PS4 version, like technically that brought it down, or I, I don't know, maybe there were more reviews for the ps4 the version PS, and the so ps4 that... version has 80 
83 <clears throat> reviews and the Xbox One version has 27. So, I mean, with most games, the more reviews there end up being, the more the score ends up coming down, down more often than not. So, yeah. I mean, that that tracks. So, um, I just I thought I'd mention that here. Uh, we don't normally delineate between ports it, or versions. But. It is It is strange, though. The PC version has 30 reviews, which is closer to what's on the Xbox version, and that has a 77 overall. So yeah. there's a seven point split between the PC version and the Xbox One version. I could basically see, I could see the PC version having more issues though. Um which is strange to say you would think it would have fewer issues, but PC ports could be notorious for different things. And i again, I'm I'm out of my depth because I didn't really go back and read all these old reviews, but it's interesting to kind of see the spread between the consoles at the launch of the remake. So yeah, there was a wide array of opinions on this one. Um, and I think this is most easily seen by kind of our own discussion that we'll be having today. Because yeah, like you said at the top, this is your favorite Resident Evil game I think we've played so far this season, correct? It absolutely 100% is. This is my favorite one. So explain this to me. Explain why. <laughs> Again, I do not hate this game. Um, I think this game is pretty solid, actually. And I enjoyed playing through it once again. And I think it's quite fun. But I would not say it's the best or even close to that, honestly. So I'm, I'm curious why you think this. I think it's important to understand the context of when I played this. So... As we've established, hadn't played a lot of Resident Evil, uh, maybe played half of 7 in VR, played half of 2, kind of the year prior in 21. And come 2022, early in the year, I was I had just finished Ace Attorney game on Switch, the, the prequel series, the first game. And Pokemon Legends Arceus was out in a week. And I needed okay. something to fill the time. And I couldn't play the next Ace Attorney game. That would have taken... 40 hours it was just too much i was like i just need something short and sitting on my shelf staring at me was resident evil 3 and i remember everyone complaining about how the game was so short i have a buddy here he's like it's it's too short it's like six hours i'm like that sounds perfect this is ideal perfect timing and so i booted it up and i'm playing through resident evil 3 and it's is spooky, starts out all spooky. Resident Evil, uh, Raccoon City is just collapsing around you and this this big monster is uh, constantly pursuing you through the city. Not in the Mr. X actively walking behind you all the time, but just keeps showing up over and over and over no matter how many times you think you kill it. And it's just so much fun. It starts out as a scary action game and then it turns into just an action horror game. And I was like, this is, it was so short. I was like, how easy is this platinum? And I look it up. I'm like, you got to beat it four times. I'm like, this is, I could do this. I can do this. And so I went on and I got the platinum in like five days. And I just had an absolute blast with the game. I think Jill is phenomenal as a protagonist and a playable mm -hmm. character. I think Carlos is just funny. He's just that goofy, charming, funny guy who's there just enough. Uh, I think the game's beautiful. It's so tight and linear. It's just, it was what I needed at the time when I played it. And I think that elevated it to a higher status for me. So why do you, I guess, now that we have played all of these games this season, yeah. why do you still feel so strongly about it in comparison to the others? I think this doesn't have the fluff. I think this is all meat here. The fat is trimmed. Uh, I don't really feel like there's the Resident Evil problem of like one area too far. Maybe the sewers just kind of feel like, mm, what what are we doing underground here? But, you know, the clock tower thing is just a boss fight. Jill waking up in the hospital, entirely optional exploration to go get the Magnum essentially and like unlock all the lockers. But an optional yeah. thing. You could just go straight down to the lab. So they really just trim the fat. And I, it's fun, and I really enjoy Nemesis, and I, I think I like the action-y side of it. Not to say the game's not scary. It certainly is the very first time you play it, but I like the action in this game. And so I'm, 
I kind of think I might really like five and six. If they're as so action oriented as people have discussed in the past, I'm, I actually think I might be in that audience that Capcom is kind of, you know, was looking for in the, the late aughts, early teens, you know? Well, five is more like an expansion of four logically. And then six just is kind of more like resident evil gears of war. (laughs) So, so there's like different, they're not exactly lockstep with this game. Uh, This game is much more action heavy for sure. There's a dodge, dodge mechanic. I feel like Mm -hmm. you just, you do a lot more. You're encouraged to kill more or kill the monsters more. Yeah. There are, there's a really great escalation of boss fights with Nemesis, so that just kind of, those build really well, I think. So, yeah, you're encouraged to like become powerful, and Jill feels powerful and fully capable, and she's just like, "Carlos, I don't need your help." <laughs> it's just so much. It's yeah, so she's much running fun. directly into f- battles with Nemesis this whole game, and he's like, "What are you doing?" She's like, "Don't worry, I got this." <laughs> she's so. the best. It, this game is why I play Jill in Resident Evil 1, the f- mm-hmm. you know, since we only did one route each in that. Jill, I think, is super cool. And hearing that she's not in any mainline games after this, right? She's not. She's not uh, I don't think so. She's in Revelations, I believe. I think Revelations and, is her series. Like, she's got yeah. those two games, but she's not I know not Claire in is in the six. second Revelations as well, okay. I believe. I have not played those, so if I'm saying things out of turn here and you're screaming at your uh, listening device that you're listening to this on, sorry. But yeah, I'm pretty sure she's in Revelations, and I think she might be in Revelations too. But yeah, she's not been in any mainline games, really, since Bring this. Jill back. Well, she was in, I mentioned this to you before we started recording, but she does show up in DLC for five and there's like a DLC chapter involving her and Chris being stars partners once again, which is cool. And so that was the way that's her, that's her big return in the mainline games. Um, I think they added that DLC, same thing that they've kind of done here recently with villages. They released like a gold edition of the game and added a section where she was playable. So she's been back in the mainline series in that manner. But yeah, we've really not seen Jill otherwise since, I mean, until this remake, I guess, which is weird because obviously it's a remake of an older game, but... Yeah, so tell, as the person who's played Resident Evil far longer than me, what am I, what, what is it to you that doesn't make this game sing quite like it does for me? I think there are a couple things. For one, I, I'm fine with a more action-focused Resident Evil. That's fine. Obviously, that works well with, you know, four and five. Six takes it too far, but like four and five are good. So it's nothing about the action-focused nature of it. It's the more that this game is trying to be... It has its, it has one foot more in the action side of things and one foot in the, like, puzzle pseudo... Like, more classic Resident Evil. This is kind of like the bridge between them and I don't feel like it excels it either really like it doesn't excel at action in the same way that I think four and beyond did but it doesn't really the puzzles in this I find very uninteresting and not great especially in comparison to two it is far more linear than two as well like the best part of the this game I think is that first area you get into that little section of raccoon city the town where there's the different shops and stuff like that like that's the best area of the game because there's different ways to get around and nemesis is showing up out of nowhere like that's the best area of the game and then everything after that is incredibly linear and it just and it that's fine like things are okay to be linear but i I think within the context of what resident evil is it's almost a little bit better especially within these older games to have a little bit more like exploration to it especially when that's going hand in hand with the puzzles and you're trying to figure out how to advance and how to get through these areas and i think that would work to great effect and this is this is the disappointing part of this game to me is i love nemesis nemesis is great like nemesis is obviously the thing in this game and nemesis is outshined by mr x one game prior like i think mr x does the things that people think of with Nemesis f- to far greater effect. Um, Nemesis is cool in this game. I like the boss fights. I think the boss fights are fun. 
Um, and they're all they're all quite unique in their own ways, I think. Yeah, there's a variety with mm-hmm. like how they evolve as compared to to Birkin, which is the same the same fight every time. Yeah, compared to two, I think the boss fights in this game are a lot better. So that is one plus that I would give it. But Nemesis does not like in the original game nemesis could just like show up out of nowhere like the the original game was more like the first area of this game that i was mentioning that little town area where you don't know where nemesis is going to show up you're trying to avoid him he's after you like there's just that constant looming threat and in this game he shows up uh, quite often obviously but they're more scripted and it's more linear and you just have to get through this one sequence where he's after you um, so the actual process of, you know, moving around this world and trying to solve puzzles and trying to advance and trying to do this, that, and the other while he's after you, like those are the same types of things that resident evil two did so well with Mr. X and just this constant dread and fear of like, Oh, I know what I have to do, but I, I, I know this guy is also after me at the same time. And, uh, the instances where resident evil three does that, I just think are not enough. I don't, I don't think they capitalize enough on what nemesis could be in this remake and so that's one of my that's my biggest disappointment with it i think Mm -hmm. um i don't mind its smaller nature as well like this is not a dual campaign like a lot of the others so i think it's expected to be a little shorter and that's always been fine with me so yeah i don't know i again i don't hate this game and in fact i think this is still a very good remake um i just think two is more like if I'm going to com- compare the two most recent remakes in the series, I think two modernizes what the classic Resident Evil formula is to great effect and three doesn't do it as well. Like I feel like this remake could have been better given what the original Resident Evil 3 was because I have played the original Resident Evil 3 and it's been a very long time since I played it, but I, I think there was more room for growth with this re- or maybe not growth, maybe just This remake could have been better, I think. Um, And you never really get the sense in any one point in this game that you are in Raccoon City and that you're seeing the fall of the city and and things like that. And those are the kinds of things I think they could have done better. The opening sequence where the town is like really in flames and you're getting out of uh, of her apartment and stuff like that. The game opens terrifically. And I think the opening uh, cutscene that they show that I mentioned before that was a little too close to home when this game first came out. I think that this game sets up really well in those ways and then it just ends up being you never really end up seeing anybody outside the main cast. It's just Carlos and Jill in this town and you're not really seeing anybody or running across anybody. I think it's interesting you know you it could you, this remake could have been better or it could have done more and you're talking about it and I was just thinking about kind of the timeline of this game in both instances, the original and the remake, Resident Evil 3 Nemesis for the PS1 was born out of a desire to make a bunch of spin-offs to kind of carry the transition over from PS1 to PS2. They were working on Resident Evil 4 at the time for PS2 until it became a GameCube game, and they needed something to kind of hold them over, and so they put in a bunch of game spin-offs into work, one of them being Resident Evil Nemesis, which was then slapped with the number three on it to sell more and then resident evil code veronica as well those were kind of in the works at the time and so it was this reuse of assets to kind of speed up production and crank out a game and and make money and then i look at this game the remake and it came out in 2020 the year prior was resident evil 2 remake we're reusing a lot of the same tech and, and assets. Heck, we go back to and the police station. Yeah. Yeah. We're So I'm sure the sewers are the exact same assets, just redesigned in a different space. So we're we're reusing that. And what what are we waiting for? What is what is the holdover? Because it was Resident Evil 7 and then the remake in 2019, Remake 3. What comes out in 2021? Resident Evil Village. Like it was the holdover game to the next major Resident Evil game. And now we've been in a holding pattern for four remake, which is kind of that logical next step. And so, well, I don't want to say like this game was cursed feels harsh, but it was a transitional game both times to yeah. turn around, crank out assets, and make some money. And so that's interesting that it was in the same situation both times in its its life cycle. Yeah, and that kind of 
Yeah, I think if this game had more development time where it wasn't on a tighter schedule, they probably could have done a lot more with it that would have made us stand out a bit more. Because, yeah, I mean, I don't know if you would agree with some of the things I was saying before that, like, as the game that stands is the sort of the, I mean, this is the fall of Raccoon City game. This is the game where the city gets nuked and you say goodbye to Raccoon City and you don't really ever see the city itself much. I, I feel like they could have done a better job of, I mean, one is obviously isolated to the mansion on the outskirts of town. Two, you're in the police station the whole time and you kind of see the t- town beginning to fall. Three, I think, could have done a better job of having you like spend more time within the streets of the city. And I, and I think the original game does do that a little bit more. Like It makes you feel like you're actually within the city and navigating around. And this game never really does that outside of the very first little corner of that neighborhood that you're in. <laughs> um, and I would have just liked to have seen more areas like that fleshed out. This game is just very... I think both this and Resident Evil 2 are very... Are much smaller than you would think at first like a, like having replayed both of these games they're pretty tight-knit and neither of them are, are quite vast but with three i think that undermines it a bit more especially because it's it's more linear like i think these games when you have the room to breathe and ex- explore and try to figure out puzzles and stuff like that uh the smaller nature of the environments that you're navigating feel continue to feel not fresh but like you don't mind revisiting certain areas because you're solving different puzzles and you're remembering where things are at. And I think with the went with a little bit more of a linear structure to this, it kind of stood out to me this time around. Like this game is pretty small and there's there's not a lot here to some degree. Like I'm I'm rethinking of a lot of the different uh, areas. And if we, you want to go through these, because I know we have them all listed here. Yeah. I mean the town, the sewers, the police station the clock tower, the hospital, and the lab. Those are the, all the different areas in the game, and none of them are big at all. And they don't need to be these no. sprawling locations. But again, th- th- that smaller scale tied with the linearity, I think does make it feel a little bit more condensed compared to some of the other games, for sure. I Looking at the list, I have to say, as someone who is completely unfamiliar with the series, when we go back to the police station as Carlos, I remember being excited i was like oh we're back like that was a cool moment to me as someone who had no idea that was really going to happen i think there's some good moments there you see marvin get bit by brad which is this this nod right to this world and i kind of wish i know it doesn't it wouldn't make sense timeline wise because you're actually there before Leon or Claire even get to the police station, but like I would have loved a little nod to Mr. X in some capacity, I think would have been really yeah. cool. But the liquors show up, which is cool, and you, you kind of just explore that front left half of the the police station. And coming so fresh off of two, that felt pretty good. I was gonna well, I was gonna ask since we did come the first time you would have played this, the police station would have been entirely new for you because you hadn't played two. Now that we just played two and you got so used to playing that police station in two different campaigns between Leon and Claire was revisiting it this time a little bit more like, Oh, we're back here. It's the police station again. Or did you still like that section? No, I still like it because just narratively where it fits and being familiar with the environment. And you have to, we have to remember I played this game four or five times last year. So I was already pretty familiar with just the whole route and flow of the game. So I just knew I had to go in there and, you know, work my way up to the star's office. So that was just, it was, it was fun to be back there. And no, I've just familiar familiarity kind of helped me there. Uh, I know you don't get to explore it all the way. You don't really get to get keys yeah. or live in the police station. I do think if we did that, if we had explored the police station more, I feel like that would have felt really cheap. Yes. Because it's like, we just did this and now we're doing it again with Carlos and that would have broken some continuity for me but instead this lends itself to two actually one of the minor issues I had with two was that world didn't the two campaigns didn't feel interconnected as much as I thought yeah but Carlos's time in the police station feels connected to Leon and Claire's time because you see Marvin get bit you see the liquors put those two zombies uh, the two policemen up, you know, in the rafters and things like mm-hmm. that. You see how it got into the state it was in before Leon and Claire show up. So that actually made 
the world feel con- alive and connected, which was fun. Um, so that they don't overstay their welcome in the police station. I'm, I'm, I'm happy about that. Yeah, I think, like I've been talking about how I think the game's linearity somewhat undersells this game at times. And that's the one area of the game that I wouldn't say that. I do think making the police station pretty on rails and straightforward is a good choice. Because if they did let you loose in there again, it would very much feel like, oh, we're doing this all over again. Are you going to run around this whole police station again, solving all these different puzzles? And yeah, it it just wouldn't have lined up continuity-wise, and it would have just been a little too... Uh, long in the tooth honestly yeah they they really utilize that reuse that space well yes i think we talked i talked a little bit about the town at the opening and how i think that's one of the better areas of the game would you agree that that is the best section of the game yeah absolutely i like it because it it's small which is i'm a fan of the linearity and stuff but i like in its condensed nature how it feels kind of like like a city like dense you're you're using alleys and stairways and cutting through buildings to get to other sides of streets and corners yeah you cut through the donut shop or you go upstairs and there's a fire over here it just it feels like a packed in city with it all melting kind of around i actually was just kind of running and gunning through the town early on and found myself overrun by like five zombies and died. And I was playing fast and loose and I, di- I paid the price for it. So then I came back and I was a bit more methodical and, you know, I shot the gas can and blew a bunch of zombies up and, and took my time a bit more. And you really get to know that space and explore the nooks and crannies. The I like that if you go to the train uh, subway office, before Carlos tells you to when you get to the power plant, he's like, oh, you're one step ahead. Like, I like that they know where you've gone, what you've done, and the characters reflect that. It's a it's a really great part of the game that feels, feels like classic RE, but there's some dense pressure there. Well, that, yeah, that's why it's the best person, par, best person, best part of the game for all those reasons you mentioned, plus nemesis like because it is so interconnected and because there's multiple paths and because it's the first instance where nemesis is really i mean he's obviously after you from the very start of the game like uh and we can talk about the opening we should we should talk about the opening because it's great um but he's uh, yeah he's after you from the very start of the game but this is the first time where you're let loose in an open environment and he's trying to stalk you down and i i think that's all great and there there's different uh, the different things that start happening in those moments too, like not only you trying to avoid him, but then you get about halfway or three fourths of the way through this area and he's putting his like tendrils on the other zombies and making them stronger than normal or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and like, like, yeah, there's just, there's a lot of good moments in this area where you walk out of a doorway, you see him somewhere or you see something happening. You're like, I'm not going this way. And then you snake your way back around a different right. path. You have to remember the layout and the levels. Like there's, cause there's some verticality here too, where you can yes. go up the stairs or go up and crawl down the ladder and it all doubles back and crosses over. And they and there's utilize different the things in the well. environment. Even, even if you're trying to get through a, a, a direct path, there's things in the environment, whether they be explosive barrels or the, the electrical generators that you can use to kind of clear mm-hmm. a path for you in nonviolent ways to just stun everything and keep going. And those things continue to appear a little bit more later in the game. Uh, but this is this is the part, like, I, wa- I just wanted to see what happens here more over the course of the entire game. Because we're going to, I mean, we'll break down the other a- areas from here. But, like, the sewers, the sewers are very forgettable, I think. Like, I don't, I don't yeah. have a lot to say about them. Back, back to the city, just super quick. Um, two questions. Did you take the time to stun Nemesis and get the uh, weapon upgrades? Yeah. Yes, I okay. did. Okay, good. I, 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 that's one thing I actually do like is if you're, at least the first time you discover it, I remember, I still remember that moment from the first time I played. Like I threw a grenade at him just to try and do something and he, he takes a knee and then drops this box and then I'm running around trying to get him away from the box so I can pick it up because I didn't realize he was stunned the first time yeah now it's one of my favorite things and then second did you go into the toy store for fun just to see Mm -hmm. mega man yeah yes okay i just like the little mega man corner there it's really cool i played this game on hardcore 
So okay. I did play it on a higher difficulty, but I made sure to still <laughs> make him drop his weapon upgrades for me. Um, and I did get all of the different locks in the game, and I got all of the uh, bobble heads as well. So okay. I, I did I, I did a hardcore slash collectible run this time around. I got yeah. all the files too. All right, and and for the record, I, I said that I had platinumed it, which means I had access to a lot of perks and bonuses. Yeah, I did not. I did not use those. I actually, I did. I did grab the hit pouches because I just they were there. I was like, I'm going to take those. So I did. I guess make the game a little easier in that sense. I didn't have to do as much item management, but I didn't take like the recovery coins or the infinite rocket launcher. Like I, I played the game on normal just as a normal playthrough i didn't want to i was tempted toward the end with the gray heads i was just like rocket launcher would make them really easy right now <laughs> but the I, gray I, heads at the end do drove me nuts well but, we, uh, we can talk about them but i i promise no infinite rocket launcher no health bonuses or anything of this you could have gone crazy that would have been I, fine well maybe not rocket launcher the whole game but I was tempted to go. toward the end, but I, I decided to be a purist about it. And it was it was fun. I'm but I've done, you know, I've done an inferno run in under ninety minutes, so I'm I'm good to go. Let's uh I, yeah, let's go back to finish talking about all the different areas. Again, do you have anything to say about the sewers? I like some of the I like some of the like files you can find in the sewers where the guys like I, I think don't aren't they talking about like f- f- feeding he the gators about- or he talks about how much he loves the little reptile frogs things. Like he's in love with them. It's yes. funny. The collectible is even labeled a love letter. And <laughs> you could just read the way the scientist talks about these little monsters. It's those things are scary. Um, I did got you get clo- eaten by one? I did. I got a little too close once and it just swallows you whole. So that's a really cool animation. And I like just, I like you have to go under a waterfall of sewage I think that's like gross and jail comments. She's like, I've got to burn these clothes. And, but the sewers are a forgettable space. Not a lot happens. It's just a, a kind of a Y shaped hallway. So it's, it's cool. But the story told in the sewers with the collectibles is fun. Cause the sewage workers yes. like discover the monsters and they like hole up and they're like, we got to take them out. I saw him meet Jimmy or something. <laughs> yeah. And that's where you, you actually find shotgun ammo next yes. to it so like there's a cool environmental storytelling going and that's on where you there. find the grenade launcher isn't the it grenade and, they're, launcher. and they're like blow these things away mm-hmm. use the fire that's their weakness or whatever and then i think you find another note from the scientist guy who's like no my babies with the don't don't fire damage them or whatever like yeah and he doesn't and say it exactly the, like that in the grenade launcher note about how to make the ammunition is from kendo so yes. like there's just good world building in the sewers but the environment itself is totally it's, it's passive it's very forgettable yeah even more so than the re2 sewers which i thought were also pretty forgettable um after that you know we talked about the police station there's the clock tower section and then the there's some boss fights and stuff like that did you have any i just the we'll talk about it in the boss fight portion i imagine when we just kind of really hone in on nemesis but the clock tower is just a cool space i just like the idea of that environment and how they use it mechanically. But really the next truly playable area is the hospital. Once again, as Carlos for the Mm -hmm. most part, I like this part of the game, at least the first time you would play through it because it shifts back to horror and there's some density and interconnectedness where you're, you're going over hallways or you're dropping down through broken windows. You're trying to find keys to unlock doors so it's a little bit like that opening city area, but not as sprawling in the sense of different locations. It's all the hospital. I like that shift back to horror as your Carlos Jill is infected. We have to get a vaccine and we don't know how to to move forward. Well, whenever hunters enter the fray too, I think these games get very spooky. I do not like the hunters. The hunters mm-hmm. always freak me out. Lickers are obviously another iconic Resident Evil staple, but the hunters have always given me the creeps f- for one reason or another, and I don't know why. They just are giant frog-looking things. Frogs. Yes. Uh, I just do not like dealing with those. They, they hurt you real bad. Mm. Um, so, yeah, the hospital, I think, does a good job with its 
um, for that little brief section of about 30 minutes where you're navigating around the hospital, it does a pretty good job with the horror elements like you mentioned. And uh, I like seeing the one area where there's like zombies hold up in certain uh, like glass in, 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 in casings or whatever that you can't get to. And then obviously later when you come back through, they bust out and stuff like that. So the hospital is okay. And then it just boils down to the big, I'm going to, put up a barricade and fight a whole bunch of zombies here. But that's, and that's also that, fun. It's okay. just a fun little horde wave. It's it's not too bad. I think I think my problem with Carlos is that the machine gun feels real bad in this game for the most part, I believe. How do you feel about the... I mean, the we assault can talk rifle? About the, yeah, how do you feel about most of the guns in the game? Because I think the assault rifle does not... For it, for it being an assault rifle, I don't feel like it... It feels so weak. And they don't want to give you something that's too overpowered, I guess, but... I compared to every other weapon in the game, I feel like it is just not great at all. It's okay. It feels like it takes more ammo than it should to take something down with yeah. an assault rifle. But it's good in a pinch. I, I, I tried to, you know, conserve the ammo when I could because it's just so powerful. I also noticed that Carlos, is at least what I noticed this time around, was Carlos is the only one that gets grenades. Jill doesn't get flashbangs or regular grenades as far as i could tell i'm pretty sure she does i don't recall using them with her uh this time around but she also gets the grenade launcher instead of and carlos obviously doesn't i'm pretty sure she gets frag grenades that's how you get mr nemesis or mr nemesis oh wow <laughs> Com- i'm combining the two that's well, how you that's can true get, knock nemesis the down. i just didn't find a lot of them with her i guess but yeah the assault rifle is fine the pistol is totally it's a standard pistol. I think it's interesting that Jill basically gets two pistols, but you can't fuse the items from one to the automatic one. Like, I feel like yeah. that was a missed opportunity. The grenade launcher is great. I like the three different ammo types. It feels good. Explosive fire and acid. Those are cool. Mm, what else? What other gun? I like that they oh, have the different, the, the grenade types have different effects on different types of enemies too. Like they're stronger against certain types. Like we talked yeah. about the sewer creatures. It's great to use fire against them if you want to take those out a little bit more easily. Uh, the acid grenades work a little bit more effectively against other enemy types in the game. So like I think the, I think the acid ones might work well against the gray heads if I remember correctly. Okay. but I use the magnum on them. The, the magnum is a yes. great one hit. Magnum's great per usual. So is the shotgun. Like the, I mean, the Resident Evil staples. I think I do like that there are upgrades for the guns you get, the shotgun and the pistol primarily. But some of them increase the size the item takes up in your inventory. Mm-hmm. But some just actually just benefit the gun. Period. Yes. There's like a shotgun uh, ammo thing that lets you reload faster but that doesn't take up any space but then there's you know a silencer type thing for the pistol that increases crit hits uh, but that makes it a bigger weapon so there was some choice with mm-hmm. what you wanted to carry with you and how they would benefit the gun but not every perk was necessarily a, like a setback in your inventory so i thought that was a pretty good way to power up throughout the journey I mean, we've just been doing a natural progression here through the different areas and stuff like that. And I, I want to move to talk about the story and the characters a bit more. But we will, I mean, wrap up with the lab and just your general thoughts on the final section of the game. I I think, again, very, very linear. Like, you are doing some backtracking, you know, going to make the um, the vaccine there. You have to go back to that room and then you're... Um, so you are doing a little bit more wandering around, but the lab is pretty straightforward. I hate the, <laughs> hate the gray heads. This feels very action oriented by this point in the game. You've got all the different weapons. So they're throwing more hunters at you and more zombies and more in all the gray heads. Um, so it's very, it, it, it's very much narrowing into the end game. Uh, it's very much final... kill everything mode. Yes, and it feels unless you're good. playing I on hardcore. Yeah. Unless you're playing on hardcore and you're like, please get these gray heads away from me and you just try to dodge them all. <laughs> yeah, that, especially in the body bag room. I like yes. the oh environmental gosh, yes. storytelling throughout the lab. You like learn, that's where Jill learns the nemesis name. You kind of get this conflicting yes. scientist thing about we should use a virus and have a vaccine or we should use parasites and here... 
here, we're going to mail you Nemesis. Can you tell us what you think of it? Like, yeah, it feels really good. And coming off of, you know, this is our, our sixth episode in the season. So five games now. I liked the tyrant hallway a lot this time. The uh, you don't fight any of the tyrants, but I liked seeing all of the failed tyrants in Mister X prototypes. Mm-hmm. That just felt really cool to me this time around. Uh, and I'm glad you don't fight them. I feel like it, that would have leaned into the problem I had with Resident Evil Two. With there's Mister X and Burke, and like it would have felt weird to throw a new enemy in right at the end. But it's a cool it's a cool space. And the music, I like the music there in particular. We'll talk about music a little later. It's a cool, it's a cool environment, but it's certainly not as big as previous labs, which Yes. Honestly, we've complained about the labs feeling like tacked on environments at the end and feeling a bit padded. So I'm not necessarily upset that it's a more linear, condensed space. Well, this this lab area too is a bit odd because you've got the lab itself, which then flows into a big garbage coliseum sewage waste. Well, that's where they dump dispose area. all of the bodies. Yeah, I, I guess because that's um, what the whole thing is: is they dump the zombies in there and then melt them with acid. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That, I mean, so I guess it makes sense, but it's a little bit different in that regard that it's not a. It's not, a, it's not a traditional Resident Evil lab, I suppose. And it's actually really, if you think about it, it's actually pretty messed up and pretty scary because it's under the hospital. So where are they getting all these test subjects? The hospital. They're, they're taking people from up there. Now, whether they've died of natural causes upstairs or they're killing them and then experimenting them on below. But that's kind of messed up that raccoon or that umbrella would like use the hospital as a source for lab rats essentially well i do think there is one very funny aspect of that and it's just that it's so it's so goofy and makes no sense that that's the case and even jill kind of comments on it when you're heading to the lab she's like how does no one know this is here (laughs) and how does no one ever connect these two things and so it, it is a little uh silly that they're in such close proximity to each other and you could just walk down a hallway in the hospital and you're like oh hey here's this Here's this warehouse, and there's a connecting connecting hallway to a lab. So, yeah, it, it's a little peculiar that no one that ever worked at the hospital would be like, hey, what's over here? What's down this way? And I, I think the game is smart for having Jill kind of call that out in a sort of way. Um, yeah. Because it, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But, yes, the the lab is fine. I, I it, Let's – how do you feel about the – Let's just talk boss fights. I know we, I know we've done a little bit of it, and I, 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 we've done all the different areas, and obviously all the big boss fights in the game are centered around Nemesis. Um, Mm -hmm. Which one, I guess, stands out to you the most? Because there's the one at out in front of the hospital there at the clock tower where he's running around and he's evolved into a swimming boy, animal boy, big dog. Yeah. There's the one in the Coliseum. There's the one at the end, which is where he's big goop monster. And then there's the one where the flamethrower. I, again, I think these boss fights are all considerably better than what is seen in RE2. They're all different to some degree. They all have different goals to them. Like the flamethrower fight is just blow up the flamethrower on his back and uh, keep shooting him. The You have to use the mines and the clock tower uh or to pop the, the section, the wall. yeah, the section before the hospital there, um, and then the final fight. It, they, it, I, I don't like the final fight because they mix in regular old zombies, and those annoy me. And I'm yeah. like, can I just focus on fighting Nemesis here rather than being worried about rah, 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 something's grabbing me from behind? Like that. That's the one thing I don't like about that fight is that they didn't have a way to naturally make it a little bit more difficult or engaging with nemesis himself Mm -hmm. so they're just like oh well uh, just chuck in more random zombies to make this a little bit more complicated what do you think about all of them nemesis is nemesis nemesis is progression and evolution i think is the best the best part of this it reminds me a little bit of jack and resident evil 7 where he kind of progressively evolves throughout that game and then surprise shows up toward the mid mid to end point 
and becomes a big goopy monster man himself. It's great to see him get bigger and more animalistic and primal in his yes. unrelenting pursuit of stars. So it's just, that's fun. On the rooftop with the flamethrower, that feels scary in the sense that he not only has just shown up again, but now he is actively pursuing you with a flamethrower up a construction site. That's so the first time he starts wielding re- weapons, correct? Yes, because she comments on it and goes, he can wield weapons. So like, you understand that this is a more intelligent creature than you've possibly fought before. Yeah. So that's just really, it's awesome, mm-hmm. quite frankly. And then immediately... You think he's dead, jumps down, he has a rocket launcher, and then is chasing you with a rocket launcher. Like, they have immediately are upping the ante and showing you that Nemesis doesn't doesn't just lie down. And that's how, that's how a lot of fans remember him from the original game, is just busting into all these areas with a rocket launcher. It's like, what the? What is going on here? Um, I do have to say I love his design as well in the remake. All He's totally wrapped in body bags at the start. Yeah. And then they just melt away over time. The dog chase by the clock tower. That fight is cool because it lets you use the mine rocket or grenade launcher ammo, but it feels easy. It's an easy fight, but he's yeah. just transformed. It's 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 a good set piece that's a bit easy. It's also a good spot to restock if you collect everything in that that little circle before you yes. move on to the cutscene. The Coliseum fight is cool that Carlos comes in and we do all this and you really think it's dead by the end of the fight too, which feels good and makes the final fight pay off so great because it just becomes this goop monster mold thing. And oh my gosh, what a fight. It's the best. It's not very fun or engaging the final fight. But it's so satisfying to just see him blow up into a bajillion pieces. Yes, because you've been pursued by this thing the whole time. It is very much just shoot the red (laughs) blisters on his body and uh, push the batteries into their spots and then blow them up. But the final the final nuking of Nemesis is great. But it is. and, And he looks crazy. Yeah, it's one of the best boss evolutions over time that I've ever seen in a game. And it is satisfying. You feel so good when you blow its brains to smithereens. (laughs) Like, just demolish. It is very much in line with what all these Resident Evil games have always been, though, which I love, and they know this, but all these characters just always end up blowing up into giant monsters of some sort that are it's like oh no i've I've died ah and then they morph and turn into something even crazier um i mean that's happened i mean how many games have we played now where that's happened uh it happens with jack and seven it happens in this game with nemesis it happens Happens in in four happens in four yes with uh Um, multiple characters kind of uh, it happens in two if you get the true ending Mm -hmm. birkin becomes a big gloopy glob I mean, spoilers for five, but Wesker, this happens to Wesker. <laughs> what? <laughs> but, uh, yes. Uh, it, happens, it happens constantly. I mean, I think I have Village, too, which I know we have not played this season, but Lady D turns into, like, a big, like, flying bat creature or something crazy like that, doesn't she? Yeah. So, yeah. It, it, you get fish, fish Boy, same thing happens with him. Like, it's just, it's one of, it's so, it's, it's almost as, like, expected as like persona games it's always like oh all the all the persona games are different until you get to the end and you have to fight god like that's like kind of like resident evil i could predict resident evil 9 right now and i'm gonna guess that the game ends with you fighting a giant goop monster of some sort (laughs) and that's always great that's what i want keep giving it to me um yeah nemesis's design you mentioned like i do like how they did design him with this game i i wish he would I wish he was talking a little bit more. I know he does, and I know it's it's kind of there, but I, I wish they would have gave him more of a uh, distinct personality almost in this game, even if that would have come at the cost of it being 
incredibly schlocky because he is one of the most iconic characters in the series and uh, he, i mean he's been in like marvel versus capcom like what? i don't know he, if he is He's in MVC3, yeah, and he's got a rocket launcher. <laughs> he was a DLC character for that game, or he was in the expanded version of it, I believe. Uh, Joe oh was in God, it, Oh, my God, this is incredible. I'm looking at this now. What? <laughs> oh. Yeah, so he's kind of gone on to become his, like, th- there's, like, a cult fandom behind him, and I think they do him justice visually in this remake, but I, I do wish he was a little bit more pronounced, like speaking and screaming at you and stuff like that, like rather than just being like uh, Frankenstein's monster. I don't know if I'm alone in that opinion and if other people are very fine. I think it would have been just very funny if he was like screaming at you as he was chasing you the whole time, which he is, he is to some degree, but um, yeah. if they made it a little bit more pronounced, I think that would have been over the top and funny. What about kind of the other... It's not really a boss because you, I guess, only get to shoot him once. But Hmm. what about Nikolai? This is what I was going to ask you about. Yeah, let's talk about the story a bit Um, because the story is very much obviously just get out of the city. But then there's the different characters. Nikolai is one of the most prominent characters other than Carlos. I do not like Nikolai. And I just think he's too stereotypical like he's not what i want from this series i guess is it's like okay if there was a situation situation like what is being depicted in this game going on in real life would there be people out there trying to make money off of it and fill their own pockets as a result yeah i guess and so he's like a mercenary in that sense but he's i like that all of the other bad guys in resident evil kind of have ties back to umbrella and they're part of this like nebulous organization that is trying to undermine the world to some degree um and that's pretty consistent throughout all of the different games like even up until village there are still ties to umbrella with that game and stuff Uh, i'd say seven is the one where it's a little bit more isolated and the villain's a little bit different um to my knowledge but like i i like that i like that all the all these characters have ties back to umbrella and there's just part of this interwoven conspiracy um and and this just evil monolithic corporation nikolai is obviously working for them and is trying to do their bidding but he's doing so in the name of just oh i just want money and so it's from that perspective there's a lot less depth and i don't think there's a ton of depth to any of the characters in the resident evil series if i'm being uh, totally honest so he's very one note and i guess it's fine for what he is but him not having any more direct ties to umbrella other than just they're paying me and that's what i i just want money it's like okay dude like i i mean what are you gonna spend your money on if the whole world is in flames though i guess is my question for some of his character motivations okay so to me nikolai you're right one note just wants money he's fine i think he is that annoying pest the entire game and it feels good to to leave him behind at the end of the game so i think the payoff is it it works i also love jill's line to him you know i don't mind a little detective work like that one of jill's many great one-liners yes in this game but where we're at now in our playthrough of the series i don't think nikolai is all that different from wesker now I understand this Wesker true. becomes more prominent here in and this Code is Veronica yeah and this is what I've told you five yes but right now what was Wesker doing in Resident Evil One he was ordered to pick off stars and get combat data what is Nikolai doing picking like destroying Umbrella evidence in Raccoon City and getting combat data so I feel like they're very much in the same vein and so I don't mind it right now yeah. I'm more fascinated just by why what what is this combat data? The creature is dead. Like what is, what are we selling here that your creatures can be beaten? Like I I don't understand. My brain is disconnecting on just why this well, even is valuable. Well, even if even if they're even if they're even if they're defeated, that would allow them to then in theory find ways to improve their 
creature monstrosities so that's why there's different variants of the virus that are always running rampant like the yeah the t virus is not the only virus like that's always changing and then it becomes the in the later games what, what's what's it called for the Las plagas or whatever and like there's Las always different yeah you know, there's always different variants and strains and they're always trying to improve yeah uh, how these things are functioning I think Nikolai, as of right now in the series, in our own season, is on par with any other kind of main yeah. evil baddie. Now, we'll see what happens here in our remaining games and, and maybe even how they update Resident Evil 4 Remake, but we'll we'll have to wait and see how all of that pans out. But I don't mind Nikolai. Like, he's just a bully. That yeah, he's just, <laughs> he, he's just, like you said, he's a pest. Um, he's a good... The payoff is good at the end. I, I do agree with that, but he's he's very forgettable of all the different villains in oh, the sure. series. I, th- I think no he's one, up there with... No one's out um, here clamoring for Nikolai to make a comeback. Yeah, I think he's very... Uh, I think he's up there with the villain of Resident Evil Zero, the main leech oh, boy. Marcus. Yeah, is just kind of like, what is this guy's... Like they don't do anything with Marcus, and we kind of talked about that. He he's got he's got he's got more of an arc than Nikolai does for sure, but they also just don't do anything with him. So yeah, Nick, Nikolai's I don't know. It, it just he's not what I want from Resident Evil. Like I said, like it's, it makes mm. sense for there to be this character who's just like I just want money, fill my pockets. But it's like nah, it's like <laughs> him being so disconnected from everything. And and I, I've talked a little bit more about how the 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 whole the the <laughs> just things keep getting more like wait until you play code veronica and you find out like more of the origins of umbrella and who's behind all this and how it all started and you meet and you see the twins and wesker starts to become a larger part of it and then five he's a larger part of it just like the rabbit hole goes much deeper with umbrella and i think that the games where they continue to flesh those things out like like i mentioned we'll talk about it when we play village but they even do that in village at the end of village they further flesh out umbrella and uh kind of uh retroactively change things going back all the way to the spencer mansion encounter and stuff like that and change the way you view those situations and i like that so i anytime they put in new villains that kind of reshape the previous games and the way that you view them and even zero tried to do that to some degree by folding in wesker and birkin um and i would say that they didn't do it very well but they still tried to like add additional backstory and involvement from those characters nikolai is just he's in this game he's annoying jill and then he's he nuked out of his existence so presumably we don't get a confirmed kill I mean, I think it's pretty safe unless he sprouted wings and flew away. You maybe never he'll show know. back up in maybe he'll show back up in nine. Maybe so. What did you think I, about the story? I guess as a whole, there's. I mean, there's obviously we're not going to have a vast discussion about the plot and the specifics of Jill just trying to escape the city because that's all this game is about. Um, but what did you think about? Yeah, I guess just the through line thrust of the game from the... I mean, this would actually be probably a good a good spot to talk about the the opening of the game too, which yeah. we have not done and how it kicks off. The intro is fantastic. I love it for two th- reasons. Well, three reasons, five, I don't know. A lot of reasons. The start of the game is in first person and they do this twice, the start and mm-hmm. the kind of a, a, the midpoint when you wake up from the hospital. I love the use of first person to convey a dream state or a nightmare state, really, for Jill. It also kind of reminds me of the power of the RE engine, that it can be first person, third person, and all this stuff that we've talked about all season long. So that's really cool. But then you get to see this wall of red string, like Pepe Silva, just type of like conspiracy stuff, like what is going on? You learn that Stars has essentially been disbanded by Chief Irons and and all this stuff after the mansion incident. So you learn that Jill has basically become this vigilante detective trying to prove the corrupt stuff going on. And I think that's really great. Even Brad like smuggles a note in with a pizza. Like Yes. It's good. It's really good stuff in seeing Jill's apartment. And then you get the call, like you gotta get out of your apartment and Bam! Nemesis just kicks through a brick wall 
and basically just goes it to town and the pursuit begins it's such a great way to kick off the game yeah it's fantastic in all the ways you mentioned i love that jill is jill, like her dream state or whatever that you mentioned is a great way to convey her ptsd that she still has from the spencer mansion incident um, and mm-hmm. it makes this game feel directly connected to that one. I mean, it, which it obviously is, but that game hasn't been remade. Um, but despite not, ha- I mean, it technically has, but you know what I mean? Not in this new RE not engine in style. Sense. Yeah, but ju- because of that, they still don't, you know, try to ignore that game or the events of that game. And how would Jill, where where would Jill at be, at, be at mentally following the events of that game? And she's seen herself as a zombie in these dreams. And yeah, she's gone off the deep end when it comes to trying to figure out uh, the conspiracy involved with Umbrella and what's going on. And she knows she has to get out of the city because things are getting worse and she's got a X fill date already. Um, and then, so yeah, yeah, you get a good, I, I think, I think she gets really fleshed out well from the jump in this game and you get a really good quick insight into where she's at as a character just based on, environmental storytelling for the most part and reading the various notes around her apartment and stuff like that and she's just kind of uh let herself go to some degree and she's just obsessed with what has happened in the city and then boom yes as you Mm -hmm. mentioned nemesis busts in and that whole opening 10 minute sequence with nemesis chasing you down and is so good it's 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 really it's really really fun it's the best this game comes out on such a high note. And then I think that's one of the other problems with it is that it's just never, I don't know if there's anything else in this game that reaches that same height other than maybe blowing away nemesis at the very end. But it yeah. really sets such a high bar in the opening 10 minutes and then it is not able to top it again. And I think if they wanted to lean more into the action aspect of Resident Evil, maybe they could have done more sequences like that. Um there and there are some that's not underselling the game at all. I think of the one where she's climbing the tower when Nemesis has the flamethrower, that's a pretty good sequence as well. Um like there are other good moments in this game, but just none of them are able to do what is done with this opening sequence where he's just busting through walls left and right. And that's so great. So, and that's what, I, that's what I think of when I think of nemesis too, because that's what the original game is so much like is him just busting in out of nowhere. And you're like, Oh no, I got to get out of here and run. There's not enough moments like that in this game. And we mentioned some of the others that are scripted, you know, where he comes out of nowhere and he's got a rocket launcher. Or, um, but yeah, those, those moments are not, too common and i wish we had more of them especially with nemesis because i think that i i think those instances those on rails instances like at the start of this game do great things for both nemesis and jill as characters um nemesis just being with his endless pursuit of jill and jill showing her savviness and quick wit quick wits to get out of these situations and also just not backing down (laughs) and being willing to go right at him when she needs to um, so yeah, I wish, I wish there was more of that, but it comes out on a very high note. Um, did you have anything else to say about, I guess, just the through line story again? We, it's very broad. This is the final raccoon city game. Bye bye raccoon city. Her and Carlos. <laughs> I, I don't know if we've talked too much about their relationship. I stuff. like their relationship. I think it's, I like that he is an umbrella employee. And yeah. He I like learns about their evil throughout and kind of like. He was never against Jill. He's always been on his side and level-headed. And I like how Jill is mad at him in the beginning. Like, doesn't want to work with him. Doesn't really trust him. But they kind of have each other's back in certain situations and trust is built. I think that naturally progresses over the course of the game. Mm -hmm. And Carlos They have a much better back and forth than I would say like Leon and Claire do. Leon and Claire kind of build rapport quickly because they help each other out at the beginning of RE2. But they really have no relationship of any sort which is why when you get to the end of the game and sherry's like can you guys be my parents or whatever it's like these people don't even know each other though yeah this this feels like a really natural built relationship over the course of trying to escape the city you know yes. it, it feels good and i like carlos like carlos never doubts jill never underestimates her 
is always there to help. He's in a great support role. And Jill begins to trust him over time. And it's just a good story. And then he saves her and stuff. It's it's a great pair there. And they cut the fluff of needing two campaigns by just having Carlos playable twice, which I think is the right amount. It's It was a fun surprise initially. And then it, it's it's cool in the hospital to play that portion instead of just... Jill has has been given the cure in a cutscene, so it's good good team building. You mentioned it uh, before, and we've talked on about it a little bit, and we've we've do, been doing so over the course of this whole episode. But I did just want to also say, yeah, Jill is one of the best Resident Evil characters. She's oh, she's my favorite. She has a much stronger personality than a lot of the other characters do. Like even Chris, Chris is one of my favorites, and he's pretty one note and boring a lot of times Mm -hmm. uh jill has a much more distinct personality i think um probably one of the more i I think she's maybe the most standout character of the whole series in a lot of ways she has so many great one-liners in this game my favorite is when he nemesis is on fire and he jumps into the river and she thinks he just drowns and she says can't even swim yes like that's great that's a great line uh next time take the hint as the yes. blow of the brains out is so good she her one-liners are i think top tier resident evil stuff i yeah i know people would go to resident evil 4 and leon and like the stuff that he says but i jill is consistent in this game she's just one liner after one liner and they are delivered so well. It never feels too too cheesy. It's just the right level. And uh, it's great. She is fantastic and a great performance. Was there anything else you wanted to talk about with uh, general core pillars of Resident Evil? Uh, like the puzzles or the inventory system i don't think there's really anything to say about the inventory system this time it's very similar to re2 and you kind of it is is the re2 system yeah so there's nothing there the puzzles are just light enough you know you're never you're never really stuck i don't think it's it's pretty hard to get stuck well that and that's just because it is so much more linear yeah we've we've talked about like they just don't okay with that i i do want to say i now having played you know this will be i guess this is my sixth game that i've played i kind of wish this game had like an extra scenario or a dlc type thing you know re2 had like four scenarios seven has some four two i wish oh even there's a wesker mode now i do get that there are multiple playthroughs and you get new weapons and you can go faster and faster that's fun i love that but there wasn't like a, you know, tofu or hunk scenario. Like I, I didn't mind it before when I played last year because I didn't know about these things really. But I wish this game kind of had a little, a little bit more fluff in the extra content realm. Yeah, there's not even any DLC for this game either, is there? I mean, there is. There are very few costumes. There's like two you can buy, and um, mm-hmm. it's just. It just feels light on like that extra supplemental Resident Evil material. Well, you're supposed to play Resident Evil Resistance. Come on. This is true. You just gotta play you get just gotta play the bonus multiplayer game that was horrible. Had you have you ever tried it out of no. curiosity? No, I've never. I think I dabbled with it when it first came out and it's not. It's great. asymmetrical multiplayer, right? Something like that, yeah. One person is like a mastermind and is trying to unleash different umbrella creatures to stop these uh, survivors who are trying to escape. So, yeah, it's not great. I pulled it up. Uh, The only costumes you can buy, there is the pre-order bonus was Jill in her stars uniform. So that's, I think, freely given out. But the only costumes you can buy are the classic pack, which are designed after the RE3 original outfits where carlos is a a white man it looks like with blonde hair and and jill is in like her tube top and a sweater around her her waist and some some shorts so but resident evil 2 had like a a you know rick grimes style outfit for leon and yes i forget honestly what claire could get so it's just 
it feels like there just wasn't all this extra Elza Walker and even Resident Evil Zero has more costume packs where they put Rebecca and Billy in a bunch of like silly things. So I kind of wish there was more. You're in agreement with people then who say that they think this game is light on content. Like I know that you like the through line campaign quite a bit, but there is not as much to this one as other Resident Evil I, games for sure. Yeah, I just it feels like that a missed opportunity to throw more costumes in and maybe like an extra scenario, you know, maybe maybe more on the hunk side of things. I know that scenario was there. Maybe you get more like a hunk mission again or something, but you just got to play Operation Raccoon City if you're dying for more hunk. Come on. I mean, we could. It's not too late. We're only mid-season. Could, but that's a scary prospect. Let's talk music. Um, I, again, I don't know how much you have to say. Save room, baby. <laughs> this time around. Yeah, this time, the music in this one really didn't stand out to me as much as many of the others, which I, I know I've said before. Um, but yeah, it, it's, I, I cannot remember anything distinct from this game. And I know you said that you can though. So I, well, the one in particular I really wrote down besides the save room was, uh, the nest lab theme. I like that kind of antsy piano that's pushing yeah. you forward. It's like, we know we're at the end of the game. That feels really good. Yeah. There's the pursuit themes and stuff like that. Like it, there's good energy. I think when, there needs to be yeah like we talked about the opening of the game like yeah it's it it matches the pace well i'm there aren't as many standout tracks i think as in resident evil 2 you know Mm -hmm. that we've talked about but i like um you know i like a few of the songs here in particular the nest lab theme max let's uh wrap up and as we always do and talk about this game's legacy, because I do think it is an interesting one. And I think you hit the nail on the head earlier when you were talking about how this game was made both in its original and remake instances, where it was kind of a supplemental game to resident evil two in both instances. So this game has never been, I think within the eight mainline entries of the resident evil series, this is not one that people point to a lot as being one of the best or most memorable. You might be on an Island there by yourself in that regard. Um, but I think that's just, yeah, for a lot of the reasons we mentioned, this game is more linear. It was not really meant to be a mainline entry the first time around. And then it kind of did become one. And then with the remake here, it feels more like, a very good expansion or DLC of Resident Evil 2. Like a lot of reused assets, a lot of reused uh, structure and things like that. And obviously this this game is still good. I I, I do not think this game is bad. I've I've heard some people say the game is like straight up bad and I don't understand that. Like I had a very good time. I had a very good time playing this, but it is, it just doesn't, it feels like a supplemental Resident Evil game for certain. Um, and yeah. I don't know if you have any differences of opinion because of your own personal feelings on the game. I'm certainly way more positive on this game. So I think I look at it as this lens of a smart reuse of assets to make like a sequel game, uh, a la Majora's Mask, which would have definitely been a thing, you know, around that time uh, with Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. Those were announced not far apart and. Now we've got Resident Evil 2 and then turning into 3. Well, this used to be way more common in game development. Like, I'd say up until the past 8 to 10 years of AAA development, I feel like even going back to, like, the 360 and PS3 gen, there was a lot more of this stuff where it's, like, one game comes out and then the next game, it's like, okay, let's just reuse a lot of the assets we did and we'll push out, you know, we'll push out Uncharted 3 in two years rather than... Right, and... But look at today as well. I think at least primarily with PlayStation, you've got Uncharted Lost Legacy or Miles Morales. Heck, we've joked about God of War, you know, Atreus goes to college. Like the idea of reusing assets to make these smaller, they're bigger than what would used to have been standalone DLC. Now they're just more small spinoff games, standalone $40, $50 games instead of the full price. And I think Resident Evil 3 
fits in that realm. And today, you know, it's 20 bucks or whatever. Like the price is so easy to to swallow. I don't know if this was a full sixty dollar game when it came oh, out. Oh, it was. Yeah. I'm, okay. So I, I could see the the contention there because of you know it is a, it took me less than four hours to beat it this time around. But my total game clock is like twenty four hours. So I've spent so much time in this game and I love it so much. I think the most important thing in its its legacy overall is it's not afraid to be a video game. It hams it up you can unlock infinite ammo and perks and power-ups and it encourages you to do multiple runs which was a part of the original design back in 99 yes yeah. here's how you get all these secrets and unlock all these things it's just not afraid to be a game and take itself too seriously and encourage fun challenges and mechanics and design and i i think that's super refreshing in a world of 30, 40, 100 hour open world games. This is a weekend game. It reminds me of The Order 1886. I rented that and beat it in one night and it was, that game's fun and beautiful. And this game is fun and beautiful. It's refreshing. It's snappy. It's engaging in that way. I think this is, it's like a breath of fresh air to a degree. And I, especially in other games in the industry, not isolated to just resident evil and so i think that's really the legacy for me on this game is it just is fun yeah i i do wish in a general sense that more games like this did exist um yeah. because i i do like these games where there are quick turnarounds like it was very cool to have re2 come out the remake and then have this 12 to 14 months later or something like that that was mm -hmm. awesome i remember how thrilled i was as a resident evil fan i was like oh my gosh we're eating good right now still uh, are and we still are exactly um so like I, I i love the when when smaller games like this do roll out i guess within the larger context of the series though this is definitely one where there is less meat on the bone for sure there is not you know even going back to the older games there's not two campaigns yeah. um the four five and six are all much longer seven and eight are doing different things as well like this is the mainline entry in the series that is probably the briefest and okay. uh it, it does yeah and that's fine and it doesn't have to be this sprawling 15 hour thing or have multiple uh, playthrough uh, multiple uh routes with different characters and things like that this game is good for what it is absolutely yeah but i also understand why it's not considered like top tier within this this series if that makes any sense i can i can see it but everyone who thinks that is wrong this game is the best <laughs> i am curious if that'll continue holding true for you it may be it may not be as much meat on the bone but there is zero fat there is zero fat in this game <laughs> is lean it's ripped this game is shredded. i'll largely agree to i'll largely agree to that because even the sections that i do not care for like we said the sewers and stuff like that they're they don't overstay their welcome really so yeah. you're in and out pretty pretty fast so that's good it's a great game the one last thing i want to bring up before we do move on is that we've we're kind of done with this era of old resident evil here for you and we've got code veronica coming up will be our next episode yeah. i believe correct it is. Code Veronica is episode seven. And then that'll be our final episode. I am very much interested in seeing how you take to that game. Um, and not I'm only that, but try it. after you play Code Veronica, I'm wondering if you'll feel strongly that, like most people do in the fandom now, that that game needs a remake desperately. Well, we've talk we talked about it briefly. That seems like the logical next step before a five or a six. So I'm hopeful. And it kind of, and this game kind of teases that at the end. Uh, with her is that picking what up that the vial. So her picking up the vial, that's a Code Veronica thing. It just kind of, it kind of hints that this is not over yet and that Umbrella is still out there and she's still doing work. And like, it doesn't hint directly at Code Veronica, I suppose, but it would be a logical, it's a good stinger, I guess, for what okay. would be next, which would be Code Veronica. Because I know in the mainline order, obviously four is next. But Code Veronica is one of the most important games in the whole series when it comes to like overarching storyline stuff. Okay. So, yeah that that game I'm I'm ex I'm interested in hearing you 
your thoughts on that game, especially because I think we talked about this in our previous episode. That will be technically the oldest game in the series you will have played because there isn't a remake or a remaster for that one. Like there is with RE1 and then RE0 obviously came out after Code Veronica and stuff like that. So that will be the oldest entry that you've played. You will be playing a PlayStation 2 slash Dreamcast game here. So Very good. I'm excited to play it. Uh, and I'm looking forward to our episode, which will be our next one. But for now, I think that wraps it up on Resident Evil 3. Thank you so much for listening. If you like, you can follow the show at Chapter Select. You can go to chapterselect.com and see all of our other seasons, things like God of War, The Last of Us, TV shows going on right now. You know, So you can check out all of that. Uh, if you'd like to follow Logan on Twitter, you can at moreman 12 and his writing over at comicbook.com. If you like, you can follow me on Twitter at MaxRoberts143 and my writing over at MaxFrequency.net. And until next time, adios. Or should I have said goodbye, RC? <laughs> yeah, goodbye, Raccoon City. So long, RC. <laughs> Chapter Select is a Max Frequency production. This episode was researched, produced, and edited by me, Max Roberts. Season 5 is hosted by Logan Moore and myself, Season 5 is all about Resident Evil. For more on this season, go to chapterselect.com forward slash season 5. Follow the show at Chapter Select and check out previous seasons at chapterselect.com.